Hello, I'm Pastor Rick Dykema, and it's my privilege to welcome you to this online worship gathering of Ada Congregational Church. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, we pray that you would experience God's welcome here amidst a group of people committed to doing our best to love all, welcome all, and seek justice for all. As we worship together today, we pray that we would experience God's grace and God's peace. One note, uh, today is the final day of our series on spiritual gifts. And then next week, we enter into the season of Lent. And we start that on Ash Wednesday, which is this coming Wednesday. And we're going to have an in-person service, family-friendly, all ages welcome, but a meaningful service as we lean into our theme of full to the brim. And we'll do the imposition of ashes, and we'll change out our colors to purple as we move into the season of Lent. So we invite you to join us this Wednesday at 7. Grace and peace. We light these candles to remind us that Jesus is the light of the world. Please join in this morning's call to worship. Whether we hear a voice from the heavens or a still small voice from our hearts, we listen carefully for the love of God. Believe and accept God's love and live in God's freedom. We believe thanks to be to God. May our experience of the divine transform our doubts and fears, and prepare us to love the world. Let us pray. God of glory and light, you are beyond words and description. Your love is beyond knowledge and explanation. Make our hearts receive you. Change us, we pray, that our lives may reflect the glory of your transfiguration. We rejoice in the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. Welcome friends, let's say our greeting. The Lord be with you and also with you. Today is the final Sunday after Epiphany and it's the last Sunday right before we begin the season of Lent. That begins this Wednesday with our Ash Wednesday service. The season of Epiphany was a time for discovery. We talked a lot about opening our eyes really big to discover something new about who Jesus is. Maybe we discovered something new about God or about ourselves or about the world. It's a time to shine the light and to see God's light leading us. On this day, there's a special name for today the Sunday of Transfiguration. And that comes from a Bible story where Jesus and some of his disciples went to the top of a mountain. And while they were there, 
people from the Bible appeared as well, including Moses, who had already died. And during that time, the disciples were very surprised at what they saw and who they saw. And then Jesus became glowing, and it was as though he changed right in front of them with his appearance and how he looked. The disciples were very confused, but yet a voice from heaven said, this is my son whom I love. It was at this point that we then begin to turn towards Easter and who Jesus is. We're now going to hear the stories of how Jesus is our savior and the Christ who died upon the cross and rose at Easter. And so to help us get ready for that celebration of Easter and our time in Lent, we have put together at our church Lent at Home Kits. And if your family would like to receive one, just reach out with an email or a phone call or stop by church and we'd love to share them. There are projects including recipes and crafts. There's also a countdown calendar that helps us to mark the days till we get towards Easter. There's also a simple project to make a Psalm 23 bracelet. I'm actually wearing mine today. I think you can see that. And the colors of the beads are going to help us remember parts of Psalm 23, because during Lent, we are going to learn that as a church family. It is a great Psalm of comfort and love, and we hope you can join us in doing that. For our older friends, we also have prayer cards that are available. And some of these prayers and daily thoughts will be on Facebook. We also have a devotional book that goes with our theme for Lent, Full to the Brim, an Expansive Lent. And throughout this book, there's beautiful artwork that is reflected upon. So if you would like one of those, please reach out as well. This is an exciting time of year. It's a time when we turn from winter to spring. And it's a time when we turn our hearts and look inward and think of what Easter means to us. Let's say our echo prayer together. Holy One, may your light shine in me. Holy One, may your light shine in all creation. Amen. And a blessing for our children. God made you, God loves you, and God cares for you.
I therefore, the prisoner in the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all in all. But each of us given grace according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore it is said, when he ascended on high, he made captivity itself a captive. He gave gift to his people. When it says, He ascended, what does it mean but that He has also descended into the lower parts of the earth? He who descended is the same one who ascended far above all the heavens, so that He might fill all things. The gift He gave were, the some, were that some would be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers, to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for the building up the body of Christ until all of us come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to maturity, to the measure of the full stature of Christ. We must no longer be children tossed to and fro and blown about by every wind of the doctrine, by people of trickery, by their craftiness and deceitful scheming. But speaking the truth in love, we must grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ from whom the whole body, joined and knit together by every ligament with, with which it is equipped. As each part is working proper, properly, promotes the body's growth and building itself up in love. Today, we conclude our series on spiritual gifts. Bruce Bugby describes those as divine abilities distributed by the Holy Spirit to every believer according to God's design and grace for the common good of the body of Christ. And we've focused on spiritual gifts because when we discern our gifts and we lean into those that our lives are enriched. The world is made a better place. We experience God's peace, God's grace, and we're able to better share and spread God's grace and peace to the world. Over the last several weeks, we've focused on individuals' spiritual gifts, mine, yours, discerning our gifts individually. And everything we've said about those individuals' spiritual gifts is also true about the community. And that's our focus today. We're going to shift from an individual's spiritual gifts to when a group of individuals use those together, when we truly become the body of Christ. And so the title of today's message is Unity in the Body of Christ. When we use our gifts we are bonded together. We become Christ's body, Christ's presence in the world. And so all those things we talked about in the last couple of weeks about the individual is also true of the community, about us as a church and as a family. We noted how sometimes we can get wrapped up in trying to do so many things that we're exhausted and overwhelmed and there can't possibly be one more thing. And this is not that. That as we talk about our spiritual gifts, it actually is limiting and freeing because it's focusing. We're able to say no to some things because that's not what I'm called to. I can't meet every need. I can't do everything. And we said that about the individual, but it's also true of the church. Our church family together, communally, can't meet every need. But if we have a sense of who we are and what our purpose is, what are we about? How are we following Christ? What is our lane? The more we discern that, the more fruit we can bear, the more of God's love we can share with the world, and the less we experience exhaustion and burnout and overwhelm 
and scarcity and all of those things. And so as we focus, we talk about spiritual gifts individually, but communally, because it's not about what we accomplish, but becoming who we are meant to be. Again, individually, who are you meant to be? But also collectively, who are we? Who are y'all? The plural, who are we meant to be? Last week we read 1 Peter 4, each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace, each of you. And individually, we can make a difference in the world. But when we come together, when together as a church family, we use our gifts, we, we lean into our lane, well, the total becomes much more than the sum of the individual parts. We bear more fruit because we share the load, because we're being the body. And so like we said last week about when our passions and our gifts and our talents, when they all align, that's the sweet spot. That's where we can be who we were created to be for the good of others, for God's mission in the world. That's the sweet spot. And that's true of the individual, but it's especially true of us together. So I want to share a process that that our moderator, Matt Brayman, has walked us through. It's an OKR process, um, objectives and key results. Uh, but one of the things it focuses on is, is not just to-do lists. What is all the list of things we need to accomplish in the year? But no, what are, the, what are our key results that we want to accomplish? If, if we get to the end of a year and we've, we're at th- that space, boy, that would be success. That would be fruit. We would have we would have borne fruit, been fruitful. And so I want to read those because a whole bunch of people in our church family spent a lot of time last year putting these together and it's been focusing for us. It's, it's taken off. It's helped us to say no to some things because we can intentionally say yes to other things. So our major objective is to be a loving, compassionate, an inclusive intergenerational faith community, welcoming and loving to all, seeking justice and serving our neighbors. Sounds a lot like our mission statement, doesn't it? But it also highlights compassionate, intergenerational, inclusive. And those are key things for us. And then here's a list of, of key results, things that we want to work towards, not just that we hope we accomplish or we get to, no, these are the, this would describe us if we are who we want to be in the future. The first one will sound very familiar after this series. It was each member identifies and passionately shares their spiritual gifts. Here we are. The second one was our church family continues to grow in our depth of discipleship, in participation and in service, and in community awareness in intentional and also unexpected ways. Another is our community around us is aware of our mission statement and is drawn to our progressive and welcoming theology and practice. Another is we have meaningful partnerships with other churches and organizations aligned to common goals, that we would work well with others. There are others in the community doing things that are incredible, Let's not try to duplicate. Let's partner with them. Let's support them. Let's lift them up. The other, another has to do with stewardship. The stewardship season highlights the progress toward our vision. That we don't have to beg for pledges because the case is so compelling. The reason is so obvious. Another is as we seek to live into our mission and vision of inclusion, Our church completes the open and affirming process. Two more. Our impact is beyond our geographic community. And the last one, our retreat ministry helps people experience the love of God in community, grow into their authentic selves, and to be inspired to serve others. And that's what we're talking about, isn't it? That we would 
that we would experience the love of God in community, that we would grow into our authentic selves. And as we do that, we're inspired to serve others. We noted before from the book, Gracious Christianity, that spiritual gifts aren't, are given to the world through a person rather than as gifts specifically to a person. So spiritual gifts aren't for us. They're given to the world through us. They're intended to help everyone to become better lovers of God, lovers of other people, and better caretakers of the created order. And so that's what we're about. As we talk about spiritual gifts, we're talking about living into our authentic selves, to not be chasing this and that and that and over there and, and scattered. And we, it's hard to bear fruit when you're everywhere. And so how do we focus as a community? How do we lean into our lane? How do we embrace who we are and who we're called to be and grow into that? That's what we're talking about. And that's the beauty of that process we spent in the middle of a pandemic, in the middle of a pastoral transition. It's hard to think big. And yet it's important because if we're walking in the same direction, if we're using our gifts together, the fruit we can bear and the excitement that that brings Right? I, I don't know about you, but when you hear those key results, I hope you're as moved as I am. That is compelling to help us grow into our authentic selves. That our impact is beyond just our little local community, but we have a massive impact around the world. That we're partnering with others. That we're inclusive. That we're leaning into our spiritual gifts. And so you'll hear more about these things and you'll be invited more into these things. Again, not because we want to accomplish a whole bunch of things, but because we want to be true to who we are called to be. And so we invite others to join us. We figure out what we're called to and then we do it. And it's compelling and it's moving and it bears fruit. And our lives individually and communally are enriched, and equally as important, the world is made a better place. God's shalom, peace, wholeness, is brought to the world, and we can be agents of that. Our scripture for today was Ephesians 4. Paul is in prison writing a letter to his friends, friends he lived with for a number of years in Ephesus, encouraging them, teaching them, reminding them of what's most important. And to his friends, he writes this, as a prisoner for the Lord, then I urge you, live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Be completely humble, gentle, patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the spirit through the bond of peace. For there is one body, one spirit. Just as you were called to one hope when you were called, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and father of all who is over all and through all. But to each of you, grace has been given as Christ apportioned it. He says, be one, just like there is one God and one spirit, one love, one giver of grace. You too be one, one body, many parts, hands, feet, livers, ears. We all have different roles. None are valued higher than the other. But if we work together, if we lean into our own spiritual gifts, if we bring those collectively together, we function as a unified body. And that's what we're called to, to be the body of Christ, to bring good and beauty to the world.
And there's plenty of darkness. There's plenty of exhaustion. There's plenty going on in our world around us. It's hard to even keep up with the news. It's hard to keep up with our own lives. And we're not promised anything easy, but we are promised God's presence with us. Emmanuel, God is with us in the midst of it. And we are in it together. And so as we wrap up this series, we'll talk more about spiritual gifts in the future because it's important. And we'll talk about some of those other key results in the future as well. But as we lean in, in the midst of the challenges and the darkness and everything else, there is beauty and there is truth and there is meaning and purpose. And we're invited into it. And I'm thankful to be part of a church family with such a compelling vision and mission and with such a compelling sense of intergenerational community that we're in this together, all of us. We all have a role to play. We all have a part, an important part. And so as we move into the series, the season of Lent, a time where we slow down and focus on Christ, we're going to focus on being filled to the brim. And that's because of God's expansive love, but it's also as we lean into our spiritual gifts. I hope this series has been meaningful to you. And I hope that we can continue to be unified as the body of Christ. Grace and peace, friends. Will you join me in prayer? Holy and gracious God, we are so thankful that you love us. We are so grateful for the gifts that you give us, grace, love, beauty, peace, resources, gifts, talents, lives, love. God, you are so gracious. We pray that we would continue to be grateful, that we would not take things for granted. We wouldn't take our lives for granted or the relationships around us or even this church family for granted. We pray that we would love well, that we would live generously, that we would be good stewards of the gifts that you have given us, that we would work for your glory and your kingdom, your mission in the world, your inclusive vision of love. God, we pray for peace. Peace in our hearts, peace in our homes, peace in our relationships, and yes, peace in the world. There is so much conflict at so many levels. And you invite us into the way of nonviolence, into the way of self-sacrificial love. And God, we pray that we would be good stewards of that love, that we would be agents of peace, and that your kingdom, your shalom, would come here on earth. Even as we pray together the words Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
And now, friends, go in God's grace and God's peace. Live a life of beauty and purpose as you lean into your spiritual gifts. Be a good steward of what God has given you. Make the world a better place. Grace and peace, friends.